What's going on, duties? The market absolutely ripped today. So here's to hoping that your degenerate zero DT YOLO calls absolutely paid off. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what happened, why I think that the market is going to continue to pump higher and higher and higher. And I also want to call out a couple special tickers that I think you should put on your watch list because I think they even have more special room to run. And of course, I would love to get your thoughts on my own opinions as well. Now, before we get into it, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. With that being said, let's dive into it. So by the time the world's largest casino officially closed today, things were pretty green, and I want to get into why I think they're about to get more green. The Dow closes 200 points higher, S&P 500 posts a four-day win streak as tech giants rally. And yes, there's a lot of specialty things going on in tech. So right here, the SPY up 0.8%, the Q's up 1%, and small cap up 1.3%. And there's currently a lot of eyeballs on the likes of Tesla, NVIDIA, and a few others for good reason. But before we get to that, I want you to know that the whole thing is green. So yes, this morning, the financial sector, a little questionable, and it did start to recover. But across the board, things were very, very green. Uh, obviously, this is just the heat map of the S&P 500. So if you want to know some of the big news, first of all, our day all started over in Europe with the ECB, the European Central Bank. They decided to cut interest rates by 25 bips, which was fully expected. So obviously taking out an unknown variable from the market, generally a good thing. Here in the US, we got the PPI report, the producer price index that came in a little bit hotter than expected. So they were looking at 0.2. They were expecting 0.1 month over month. And if you look at the year over year, as you can see here, it came in at 0.1.7 and it was expected at 1.8. So basically the monthly a bit higher than they wanted, but the yearly better than they wanted. So a little bit of confusion there, and that's definitely going to have implications on next week's FOMC meeting. But before we get there, those were the major headlines. And yes, at first today was pretty rocky, but you could see by the end, it was a nice, beautiful follow through. And just to be fair, I want to show you the start of the day, a little down, a little up, a little down, a little up. And then it kind of caught its footing around lunchtime. And after everyone was able to, you know, eat their lunch, have a little bit of a break, calm down, like, ah, we should be bullish and it absolutely ripped. But coming back to this daily chart, the recent action has been a bit of a roller coaster. So a fake out breakdown below the 50 EMA, then it dances around there a little bit. And then recently, Wednesday, September 11th, looks like it's absolutely going to crater, turns out to be a big fake out, a huge wick and a reversal pattern. And now this nice up range day, which leads me to believe just from basic charting that we're going to get that continuation. But beyond on basic charting, there is a lot I want to talk about. Um, for those of you who are very quickly interested in levels, yes, 560 is going to be important. Really, where we're at right now is 559. That's incredibly important. There's a lot of gamma there for those of you who are options traders. But if we get above the 559, 560 level, then 564 to 565, the next major level. Now, on the screen now, this is all from Spot Gamma. The white line is the price line of the S&P 500. So this is exactly what the actual index did throughout the day. The two other colored lines are what we're seeing in the world of options. And the main thing I want to bring your attention to is the purple slash red line, which is the delta. As it goes up, that's more positive delta in the options market. As it goes down, it's more negative. So up is bullish and down is bearish. So as you can see, even into close, and we're at this very key level, there is still a lot of bullishness. So that's just criteria number one of why I was bullish throughout the day, and also a piece of my reasoning of why I think it's going to continue. But speaking of today, let me very quickly go back to this five minute chart just so we can see it in a bit more detail. The opening session was not easy, but eventually we started to see this nice, beautiful series of higher highs, higher lows, and even higher consolidation, which is exactly what I was personally able to take advantage of. If you want to trade with other people, the first month is 100% free. Join the Goonie trading community. You might be thinking, is it worth it? You bet your bottom dollar. Today alone, I was able to make $1,800. Here's what happened. You can see, here's the posting, 10.16 this morning, just to show you roughly where that was at. Right around here on this push, 
Piper, which is just the trading system that we end up using, fired off a bullish signal, but not just any bullish signal, the most bullish. Five out of five confidence, a put credit spread on the SPY. Five out of five confidence, a put credit spread on the Qs. A lot of this had to do with the underlying market, and like I referred to before, a bunch of positive gamma, but regardless, this ended up paying. The minimum unit sizing was 501 to take the full thing. Of course, you could scale it up or down however you want, but that ended up returning $99. Now, personally, I ended up trading it on SPX just because I believe that European options are a little bit better. That's my own opinion. Trade whatever you think is appropriate. But I ended up selling SPX, the actual S&P 500, here at $1.40, collected it all back, bought it back at 20 cents at 15. So that's $120 per one. And then obviously when you have 15 of them, that becomes a nice gain of 1800. So if you're curious what it's like to sell premium, what's going on in the options market, or if you just want to trade with a group of awesome people, that's exactly what the Goonie Trading Discord is for. And if you use the link in the description of this video, just make sure to put in this promo code Goonie so it is 100% free for you. Now, moving on, just wanted to cover kind of the big news of the day, what happened in the market and my personal trade. Now let's circle back to some other things that should be on your watch list and why I think that the market is going to continue up and up and up. So let's restart with this. This is the S&P 500 today. As you can see, there was a lot of aggression, specifically midday. Look at this orange line spiking higher and higher and higher. This is aggressive call buying. And if you want to know the level they're buying, I do have other resources, but it's 5,600. So quick side note here, just because that's basically where we're at, you can see right where we close today. If the options market doesn't change much from now till tomorrow, there's a good chance that tomorrow is a little bit more of a boring day, a little bit more of just a price pinning day, a good day to sell premium, but maybe not a day to aggressively buy premium, not buying calls and buying puts, maybe a better day to sell calls and sell puts just because the market makers really don't have any incentive to help it higher or even push it lower because there's so much options action right here. Now, of course, from the time that I'm filming this to the time that the market opens, or even when you're watching this, a lot could change but based on the current market the current gamma level 5600 is a big pin level but that maybe you're watching this a little later and you want to know what about next week going into the fomc meeting i'm watching this beautiful follow through we have a double top high we have a higher low between monday august 5th the next low friday august 6th so same highs higher lows nice follow through solid risk point it, this is a bullish setup. There's more bullish aggression in the market than bearish aggression, and I like to be on the side of the trend. So that's obviously true for the overall market. Very similar in the world of tech. You could argue that tech has even more upside, and that brings me to the next thing I want to get into. Now, break out your notepad, do whatever you need to, but write these tickers down. Number one, NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA has had lower highs and higher lows. That is a classic consolidation pattern. Recently off this higher low, um, about early September, we've been pushing and pushing. I want to point out that today it did two big things. It recaptured the 50 EMA on the daily chart, and it also hit its upside gap fill at 117.22. So it filled that gap with my next clear target being about 122.50-ish. Now, there is another natural level here, this downside trend line, but I also want to remind everyone that just yesterday, Jensen brought up the fact that the Blackwell production is going smoothly. So obviously that's really good, but I think someone knew something beforehand because that wasn't really announced until midday. And yet all day yesterday, someone was aggressively buying calls. And folks, when I say aggressively, I mean millions and millions and millions of dollars of call buying. And we saw the stock absolutely rock. Now today they gave some of it back, but price held steady. So it's definitely something worthwhile to put on your watch list to see if there's additional follow through because we know there's big players in the game here. The next one I need to put on your radar is Tesla, a nice classic pennant breakout. Lower highs, higher lows, initial breakout got smashed, found support at the bottom edge, and once again, attempt number two with another technical breakout. First target is obviously 234. Next target would be all the way up here at 245. And I think that is very, very possible because surprise, surprise, once again, a lot of aggressive call buying. People with big money know something is going on. Look at this orange line rip higher and higher and higher. So another thing to consider, and the specialty one of the day, the world's second biggest company, Microsoft. 
it is putting in a higher low and now a technical breakout, potentially a little bit of a cup and handle, a nice recovery of the 50 EMA. You're starting to see a repeating pattern here. But anyway, the fact that we push and close above this previous high that we saw in late August, roughly around 427, makes me very excited. There's more bullish aggression because the recent low was higher than the previous low. So looking for that follow through and someone, this is actually from today when I looked at Tesla and NVIDIA, those, that was yesterday's action. Look at what happened this morning, around 10 15 someone threw millions of dollars on the line betting microsoft would go up they didn't care that the price tipped at all because later in the day someone kept buying and buying and buying and buying and guess what the price did it ripped all the way into close so yes I don't know where this stuff is going in the short term, but the overall market is looking strong. And right now in the underlying data set, mainly der derivatives market, we're seeing a lot of bullishness in Nvidia, Tesla, and Microsoft. So put those on your radar. Now, I do want to remind you in the world of seasonality, mid-September is very bullish. Is this a guarantee? No, but historically, this is how September has played out. The mid portion is very bullish, and then the ending portion actually ends up being bearish. So be careful about the backside of September. The things that could cause this to go higher and higher and higher or lower and lower and lower is FOMC. It's the Fed at the Federal Open Market Committee meeting where they decide what to do with our Fed fund rate. We are currently sitting at 5.25%. And on Wednesday next week, I hope you're watching this in time, Wednesday of next week, September 18th, we're going to find out, are we getting a 25 bips rate cut or a 50 bips rate cut? As of now, there's a 70% chance of a 25 bips rate cut, as in it's more likely that we get the smallest rate cut out of the two, or there's about a 30% chance that they go for two of them and we get a 50 bips right out of the gate. I am personally of the opinion that it's going to be 25 bips. I don't think they're going to want to overdo it here, but I just want to put it on your radar because this is very much a thing that's going to send the market higher or lower. But in the short term, we're getting nice follow through. So the bulls are clearly in control. Another thing I want to put on your radar is the fact that gold hit a new all time high today. So any of the gold bugs watching this video, congrats to you. And it looks like that's not going to be slowing down in the short term. Now, for any of you who are like, okay, we talked about a lot of things. How do I keep track of it? There's a lot of events going on. That's what the newsletter is for. This is 100% free, macworths.locals.com. You can get this for free, 100% free, never have to pay for it every single weekend to your email inbox. I break down the week, all the major upcoming things. Here's all the major macroeconomic events per day. Here's all the major earnings. We're pretty much done with earnings season now. And then I even give you the individual seasonality for each single trading day. So like I said, I hope you're watching this in time. But for Friday, September 13th, historically, it's a little bit more of a neutral day. The bulls have won it 54% of the time. But in terms of the bull gains and the bear games, they kind of just end up netting out. So I just want to let you know about that. And obviously, if you have any questions, don't forget to join the Discord. You can do so for free if you use that code Goonie. It's all in the description of the video. Here's to a nice bullish upswing because I think there's some gains to be made, but we're going to find out in the short term. I appreciate your time. I'll catch you in the next video. Ah.